not here? Ellen? Or E L A N? Elan? How do, how do you pronounce your name? Elan. So Zach, Elan. Errol? Gerhard? Whoa, I should take attendance. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's, he's so transparent. <laughs> uh, Isabel? Okay, that's probably enough. Okay. <laughs> Just check. But I, I've, you know, it's actually, it's, it's really interesting. This is, I think it's, it's actually not a particular trivial operation to have, you know, like, you know, 50 or 60 images of, of, of people, and then to easily kind of quickly go around and kind of say who's who. So uh, it's it's sort of one of my it's one of my uh, personal uh, goals is that somehow by the end of this course I might actually know everybody. We'll see. Uh, so first of all, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, there. The first is that we do not have people's emails. So we'd ask people to sign on and to give us your email. Uh, without your email address, if we have something to share with you or something to tell you or ask you, uh, we have no way of connecting. So on the uh, EOS 350 site, which has been newly modified by, by Lindsay, uh, there is this thing called the email spreadsheet. If you could please go to that, type in your email by your, uh, I guess it's your, your student number, and then we'll be in, in contact. Uh, the second thing is that this has been updated so that you now have uh, the lectures. So there's a button there that says the lectures. So the first uh, three lectures, that are on uh, YouTube have been uh, recorded. You can go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, then the apps. So the uh, the apps that you that you got the one in particular that we're interested in uh, is the magnetic uh, applet uh, to show how to run this. You know the various notebooks. There's information here, and to actually download the app. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, how do they download the app? Well, you should be able to access it through that Minder button. Oh, OK. Uh, that'll run it on the web, and then there's instructions with installing locally how to actually download and install everything on your own machine. Right, OK. So, so uh, the Minder's is a little touchy. Like, it'll go down, but it's pretty good. It's been reasonably stable. So. OK. So, Press the launch button. Let's see what happens. Ah, ready. See, that's always a good sign. <laughs> and so here's uh, here's the various apps that we've got. The one that you're going to be interested in is this Magnetics app. And that kind of takes you back to uh, what, where we were just looking at. Okay, so this is the one that you will, I mean, you can either use it directly on the web or you can actually download it uh, and run it locally on, on your machine. Uh, let's see here, how do we go back? Oops, do I want to leave this page? I think I want to stay. Can I leave? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're back here at the at the 350 website. So that's the apps. So you can go there, uh, download, especially the the magnetic app, or run it. And then there's some uh, re resources here. Uh, so there's information. You got the GPG. You got the binder for course apps, and then you've got uh, how to download the uh, notebooks from GitHub. And the one that we're actually interested in today is the um, a magnetometer app. Uh, so I'm not sure how many people were able or have tried to download uh, 
this magnetometer app. You saw it in, well, you saw one of these at least in the lab uh, for, for the magnetic susceptibility. How many people here have like uh, an app that would record the three components of a magnetic field? One, two, three, four. That's not bad. So we got four, and then we've got uh, at least three more. So we've got seven, effectively seven magnetometers. At the end of, uh, of, of the lecture, I'm going to try to sort of about 15 minutes before, or maybe 20 minutes before. Uh, it, it's just interesting to do a little exercise. Perhaps some of you have already done it. There's been uh, some, you know, little bit of, uh, you know, hidden magnetic material in various parts in, in the room. And you can go around and try to use your uh, magnetometers in your, in your iPhone and just see if you can't find these things. It's a very, very good representation of what uh, of how geophysics works and also gives a pretty good idea about the relationship between geophysical data and how you might uh, find something compared to just you know arbitrary drilling on, on a pattern. I think it, it's simple, but it's effective. It kind of drives that point home. So we'll do that uh, at the end. Uh, let's see. So where are we? So just to uh, quickly refresh where you where we were last time. So we're looking at uh, magnetics, and we've got our general magnetic experiment where we've got a source, and we've got magnetic susceptibility. Remember, that was the ease with which uh, something could become magnetized. And then we have a, uh, a response. And the source, what was our source? Zach, our source for this, for our magnetics experiment? Like the Earth's magnetic field? Yeah, so that's just the Earth's magnetic field. It points in various directions here. So it's like a, like a magnet like this. So the magnetic field lines come out, and they point at different directions uh, of the Earth uh, <laughs> at, different, uh, at different places. So we described the, this is a vector. Uh, so we need how many pieces of information to uh, describe it, <coughs> Elan? We have a vector. Anybody else? Yeah, so we need, actually it's a, if it's a vector, then we need three pieces of information. Yeah, so it's it's like an, either an x, y, or a z, or if it's a if it's a length, then it's two 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 angles. And we'll use both of those. Uh, in particular, we use the uh, declination, which is the angle from two north. The inclination, the dip, or sometimes it's called the dip, the, that angle between the horizontal surface and where it's pointing, and then the uh, length or the intensity. Um, so the field of the Earth that tended to kind of look like this. So this was the the declination. Um, this was the inclination. The inclination is especially easy in the sense that it's sort of pointing vertically down at the, at the top and vertically up at the bottom. And then this was the strength of the Earth's field. The main thing here was the the field is very uh, small at the equator, and it's large at the poles. So typical values at the equator were like 20,000 nanoteslas, and the poles were more like 70. Um, the important equation that relates the magnetic field, which we use as H, and the magnetization, which is the dipole moment per unit volume, is the magnetic susceptibility. So that's a, that essentially tells you what the strength of the uh, magnetization is for you know any particular uh, you know little segment in, in the Earth. And then 
the idea is that we kind of do the following. Let's suppose that we've got a body that's buried here. This is what we'll simulate with the app. We've got a, bar a body that's buried here, and here's our perhaps observation plane. And if we just look at this, that's the, that's the start. If we put the uh, Earth's field on here, Now we've got a magnetic field that's coming in from the Earth, and this gives this magnetizes the body in here. Now that body actually acts like a little magnet in itself, and then that's got its own magnetic uh, magnetic fields. So that's the basic principle. We've got an inducing field or external field magnetizes this according to that uh, equation that involves susceptibility. It gives rise to this body being magnetized, and that's got its own field. And often we refer to that as B sub A, where A means uh, anomalous. And then we're going to plot these plots, some data. And we'll talk a lot about that today, uh, because this anomalous field that we've got is a vector field, so it's got three components. Uh, every time we plot something, we're just going to be plotting like a single scalar number, and so we're going to have to decide what it is we're going to plot, like an X component, a Y component, a Z component, and uh, then we're going to get an image and that uh, looks like that. And the other thing that we'll often do is draw a, what's called a profile. So we'll just take a line, like just some observation line across here. So just when you go, it'll be the same as when you go down to the beach on on, on Monday. Oh yeah, bring your rain suits. Unfortunately, we, we I don't know this. Every year we've done this, it's been really sunny on the Monday that we've done the experiment, but it doesn't sound like next Monday's going to be great. So might bring something to keep you on. Uh, anyway, so we're walking along the, uh, there, there's going to be a buried, uh, well, a buried pipe, or actually it's some rebar that's uh, just underneath the, underneath the sand, and then you're actually going to acquire data just over one line. So that would be called a profile line. And so sometimes on our data map, we just have a line, and then we look to see what is the magnetic field that's... Uh, that you'd observe there. Being able to sketch this out is probably, well, that's going to be the key to today's lecture. And it's one of the things that really does help kind of solidify your knowledge about how the magnetic fields are working and what your measurements, uh, what, what your measurements are and the characteristics of them. Okay, so. I think, okay, so what I'm going to do maybe is go directly to the, uh, to, to the applet. I had loaded this down just a little bit right at the end of last lecture. And so as I said, now you can download it your, yourself or just work directly on, on, the, on the website. So I want to take you through these, uh, th through these different slider bars. The app has got three different uh, kind of components of functionality. The first is to design what it is you're trying to, you know, what the structure is of the object that you're looking for. Right now, what I've got it is a, is a cube that's buried a little bit below the, uh, below the surface. And uh, we've got a, a volume here that we're interested in. and that's our geometry. The next part is going to be basically burying this at different points in the Earth, but we can decide where we're going to bury it depending upon the inclination and declination of the Earth's field as well as the strength. So by these, working with these slider bars is equivalent to putting at different points on the Earth. And then we're going to have the fields that we that we measure, so they could be an X, Y, or Z component, um, and then we're just going to look at the induced magnetization today. We'll postpone the idea that you could have permanent magnetization and remnants later. 
And then we're going to plot the data, and we will also uh, make a profile, and we'll try to use this magnet down here to sort of sketch things up. So that's kind of the, uh, that's sort of the plan. And I just want to now take that through various steps. So the first thing is we got an object that we're going to, to, to try to find. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's an unexploded ordinance or maybe it's a, you know, a mineral deposit or, or, or whatever. So there's a particular scale length that's associated with that. Maybe it's uh, a meter scale or 10 meters of scale, something like that. Uh, so let's first of all draw the surface of the Earth. And then let's draw this object in here, which at this point might just be, you know, be a, a, a cube. And we can do that <laughs> here with these components x, y, and z. So x is the, the length. So this object is in three dimensions, and there's an x, a y, and a z. And the x direction, or the x length, is given by the top bar here. If you click on it, you know, we, can make, uh, we can make this thing progressively bigger. So now, now this is you know, 1 and a half or 1.8 meters in this direction, whereas the y and the z are both, uh, both a half. All right, so working with those three, uh, three slider bars, we can get the x, y, and z uh, direction. So if we want to make the body elongated in the z direction, get something that looks like this. Okay, so that's, uh, that's great. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. We can later rotate this guy a bit. So we could make it a sheet and then rotate it, do all kinds of, of things. For now, we're just going to we're just going to be very simple. The thing that I, I would like to do is just do a little cube, small cube. We're going to bury it. And then that cube is going to give rise to a magnetic field that looks just like that of, of a dipole. And then we can kind of decide what these data are going to be and you know what the profiles are. So here's uh, the object. It's now a half a me meter on each side. And it's got a depth of burial. In this case, it's zero. So that means that when we're talking about the depth of burial, it's the depth to the top face. So this thing is sitting you know, basically right at the surface of, of the Earth. But we have a this thing here. Rxh is the height of the of, of the of the receiver plane. So we're actually going to be measuring stuff at a height of one meter above the of the Earth. So we've got the block. This is the Earth's surface. The block's a half a meter below, and we're going to be collecting data one meter above here. Well, actually, when you go out into the field, uh, you're going to have a called a proton precession magnetometer. It's going to be on a pole. That's going to be about 1.8 meters above the Earth. Good. So we've got this thing here. It's sort of, uh, sort of a half a meter. And so now we have to decide, OK, where's, you know, where's our ex experiment? I and mean, what sort of volume of, of the Earth are we going to want to have? Well. You know, if we had something that was, you know, a few meters on, on the on the side, uh, I don't know. Let's say, you know, four meters or something, plus or minus. So we go from my. If we're going to have this at zero, zero uh, x coordinate is zero y coordinate is zero here. So maybe we go from minus two meters to two meters or, or something like that, and the same this way. Then that's controlled by these x lim y lim values. So right now, the x limit is uh, five meters. Actually, the x and the y 
here are, are the same. So you're always going to be making it a, making it a square. So in this case, it's uh, five meters uh, on, on each side. Okay, so now we've got a, uh, a, a square area on top that we're going to be looking at. Actually, it's going to go from minus five to five, five meters. And so here's our area that we're looking at. And now we're going to bury this guy. So that's our system. So we've gone from minus five to five meters. And we've got this thing buried. What we now want to do is to look at thinking about this at various parts, various locations on the Earth. So now let's draw the Earth. And if you remember, the magnetic field lines you know, are coming in like this. <coughs> and so if we're sitting up here, they're coming in like that. If we're sitting right up here, the uh, magnetic field lines are coming in like that. So that means that the inclination is what? 90 degrees. And the declination, what would the declination be? So that's the actual negative <coughs> north pole would be zero. It, yeah, so it's it's kind of like it's almost undefined, but it, so it, you're always going to be looking exactly at the north pole, so the declination <coughs> is, is zero. And if you look in here, so there's an E in, so that's the inclination of that uh, external field, and there's the declination. So this is at 90 and zero. So that means that means that the magnetic field is coming whoosh, vertically down. Okay? So if we're sitting up here, so we, we've got our object there, then let's just, let's just make uh, another plane here for, for observations. So let's say this is the x direction, y direction is in here. So this guy is sitting in, in here. The magnetic field is coming vertically down. I just wrote this guy here. Let me clarify this for, for a bit. We're going to, as I say, uh, use two symbols. Uh, we're going to have that B naught vector is the Earth's we're going to call that the Earth's magnetic field. And this was the guy who was like 70,000 nanoteslas at, at the North Pole. Okay, so if we go here, this thing was 70,000. And over here was coming. B naught hat, okay, is just a A directional arrow. It's got unit length. So if we did B naught vector divided by the absolute value of, of B naught, whatever the length is, now we have this guy here is a vector that's pointing in the direction of your field, but he's just got unit amplitude. Okay, is that, you guys use that kind of notation a lot? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Unit, a unit vector pointing in a particular direction, no, no problem. So we've got the Earth's field coming down here, uh, point, pointing vertically down. That means whatever we've got here is going to get magnetized at kappa times the magnetic field H, but remember the relationship between B and H was that there's just a scalar mu naught. So I could equally well have written this as kappa B over mu naught. So we're going to use B, we're going to use H. We're going to be very, very consistent and clear about exactly what we mean by, by both of them. And you'll just get used to kind of going back and forth. When we talk about magnetization, we always write things in terms of H. When we talk about magnetic fields, we usually talking about magnetic flux density and good. So now we've got something buried at this location. There's a unit field 
coming down here in this particular direction. So that's going to get magnetized. This guy gets magnetized in this particular direction. So it's going to look like a magnetic dipole. And the magnetization is going to be in the direction of the Earth's field. So this is going to get magnetized in that direction. And the magnetic fields from that are now going to look. Okay, so just the same as this guy, this bar magnet here. Uh, you know, we've got magnetic field lines that go like this. It's exactly the same as this guy. Okay, so that's what our um, now these are our anomalous magnetic fields that are coming from this this body, and we want to plot them. But these are vectors, right? So we've already decided that if we've got a vector, then you know, we have we need three kind of numbers to describe it. So we could write this in terms of the x component, you know, or the y component, or the z component. We could take any any of those components. And if we do that, then this is what we're going to get. So let me first of all go back here. So here's the component, and we're going to take BZ. We're going to take BZ, and we're going to plot it. And now here's our plot. It's going from minus 5 meters to, to 5 meters. We've got this scale that's going in here. And this is the uh, pattern that we get for the magnetic or for the Z component of the field. The one thing that I didn't mention before that I, I, I should have is that there's another bar here called the susceptibility. So that's the that's this kappa. So here's our, our susceptibility. It's varying on this scale. Here you can go from one to I can. If I do command plus, does that work? Does that help? Uh, right. So, do I have to re? Zero sus. Now that's okay. What? Zero sus. Oh, I see. There we go. How did that get there? Okay. So the susceptibility actually goes from zero to two to two hundred. Um, those are some pretty big numbers. Uh, iron is uh, in the order of a hundred. Most of the susceptibilities that we saw in that uh, table the other day were for earth rocks are more like ten to the minus three or something like this. So, uh, but th th this is fine. We can easily uh, kind of scale things back. Okay, so we get this particular diagram. What I want now to do is to kind of sketch out why we get this and how, when we do a profile, we get something that actually looks like this. And in doing that, we have to be very careful about how we're defining you know, what's positive, what's, what's negative, and kind of keep track of the coordinates. So here's the... Uh, situation that we were in. So we've got a magnetic dipole that's pointing down in this direction. Maybe I'll even do it a bit better. So it gets magnetized in this direction. That means the magnetic feels like, like this. And we've got a coordinate system, x, y and z. X is positive in this direction, east. Y is positive north. And Z is positive up. So it's a right-hand coordinate system. It's UTM. Sometimes this is called uh, elevation. But that's our coordinate system. Our definition for plotting 
is like if we're going to plot something, we have to decide, okay, am I going to plot it as plus or am I going to plot it as minus? Our definition is going to be that whenever we have a field that is pointing in one of those coordinate axes, if it's pointing in the positive x direction, we're going to call it positive. If it's pointing in the positive z direction, we're going to call it positive. If it's pointing in the negative z direction, we're going to call it negative. Okay? So now look to see what happens here. And now we think about the, you know, the, the magnetic field. So which way is the magnetic field? So you're, you're sitting here at the surface. So which way is the magnetic field pointing? Pardon me? It's pointing down, right? So in our notation here, if we were going to plot this value, would you plot it as positive or negative? We plot it as negative, right? And so that is exactly what we're seeing here is that it's just sort of this kind of big negative. And from symmetry, of course, you could feel like it's if we've just got something that's like this, then we're going to have the same value out here as, as, as all around. So everything is going to be circularly symmetric. So when I look at the plane here, it's just going to be a series of circles. Okay? So that's the ticket. Think about a magnet in, in the ground. Think about the fields that are coming out. And now you're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm at this particular location. Which way is everything pointing? If it's pointing in the direction of my coordinate, positive axis, I'm going to plot it as positive. And if it's in the other direction, it's going to be negative. And then I'm just going to kind of sketch that out. And clearly, the, the strongest value of the fields are going to be right here, right? And the weakest ones will be over here. So if I were going to plot the profile of this guy as I'm coming over here, Like right here, it's going to be really strongly negative. And then as I go away, it comes out like that. And you might even think that, you know, there is a possibility that it gets, you know, it, there might be just like a little bit of a zero crossing here. Because if you look to see if you're sitting right here where the field is, you can see, oh, yeah, it's actually is kind of going back that way. So... That's what the magnetic field is, is going to look like if we plotted the z component. But you can plot different components. We can plot the x component. What would that look like? Be zero. So if we plot the if we plot the x component. Sorry, I should rewind that tape because I said something wrong. Nobody on the thing. Ah, okay, never mind. Uh, I was one step ahead of myself thinking about the X. Okay, so if we get the magnetic field, here's our uh, magnetization. Here's our magnetic field. And now if we plot the X component, so now we notice that here, okay, if, if we're sitting here, it's pointing back this way. So that means the x component is going to be positive or negative? Negative. So up here it's going to be negative. And over here, well, and so right here, if we looked at these values here, it's going to be very negative, right? So we're probably even going to go down like this. And then at this particular point here, when the fields are coming down, it's going to be zero, so we've got to have a zero crossing. And now on this side, we've got magnetic fields pointing this way, so it's going to be positive up here. And like that. So the sketch is going to look something like that. So the profile across there should be like this. Now we can see, right? So if I now plot BX, you see, this is 
this is the, the magnetic field uh, in, in two dimensions. And if we go across here, it looks just like this. So one of the things I want you to experiment with when you do the uh, w work with the app so that by Monday you'll have a, have, have a good sense of how, how these things are, are working is to vary something and then try to imagine what the fields are going to look like. And one of the, one of the good ways of kind of testing yourself, like, okay, do I really get this or not, is to just think about a profile that's going right over, over the body. And to think about that when you're putting the object at different locations of the Earth, because now things are going to get quite changed, right? So if you, and this is the thing that makes magnetics a little challenging, is that if I take that same object and I bury it at the equator, I got a whole different kettle of fish going, right? Because now my inducing magnetic field is this way, right? So that the anomalous, so now if I plot it on a, on a, on a plane like this, if this was north and this was south, you know, here's my object, it's magnetized in this direction. So now my magnetic fields look like this. So now I'm sitting at the surface of the Earth, and now my magnetic fields are looking like this. If I look at the X component of the magnetic field here, I find like, whoa, wait a minute, it's, it's got to be a great big positive value. So whereas here the X component was zero, if I'm at the equator, the uh, X component is, is very large, and I'm going to have a very different signature. So watch what happens if I take this and bury it at the equator. How do I do that? What do I do with the inclination? Yeah, make the inclination zero. So the X component of the field now has a very different type of signature. And if I look at the Z, so if I look at the Z component, it now looks something like that. So the signatures will change depending upon where you are on the uh, on the Earth's surface, and that's why it you know you have to remember you know, that this magnetic field of the Earth is, is, is constantly changing because each time you bury something, then actually it gets magnetized in, you know, different directions, and that means that the character of the field is, is going to go. So, so unlike some other things, you know, it doesn't matter whether you bury the North Pole or South Pole, you, know, you get the same results up. Uh, in magnetics, it does. So you always have to know where you are on the Earth whenever you've done a magnetic field of the Earth. So those are uh, some of the things that you can uh, can experiment with, and I think I should leave that here. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll have to leave that there. So we've got twelve minutes. Uh, you are now going to change your hats. The, the idea here is that as certain as an exploration geophysicist, your goal is to try to uh, you know find you know mineral deposits or unexploded ordnance or something, right? And we try to simulate that by burying some small magnetic objects at various places in the room. And your goal is to, in the next uh, you know, five minutes, to see how many magnetometers we can collect and to run these over the surface of the, uh, of, of the tables. And so no peeking under the table. <laughs> you get many generic points to peek. Uh, and just to kind of see, OK, can I find something that is, uh, you know, it is anomalous? So the, what you're going to be looking for you know, is something actually that's got a signature of a, of a, of a magnetic dipole. 
because that's what these are, small magnets that are being generated. And they're going to give rise to something, you know, a, a magnetic field that is going to be high over, over top of them. And you're just trying to see, okay, can I find regions of where they are? And the interesting point is that we're lucky uh, when you find something, we'll give you some chalk and you can make a little X on it, and, but without peeking under the ground. And then we'll take a look to see how many of these things we found. And perhaps sometimes there's what's known as false positives. You find things that you think are there, but uh, they're not really there. So we had, what, four, four iPhones? Can you load up a magnetometer? I've got a magnetometer app on this.